all that time I spent farming weapons and for what? Only for the final battle to come and you all be completely useless. You abandoned me and it's over between us. I'll never trust you to have my back again. Just leave like you left me in the final battle. <laughs> my weapons. Uh, just go already. All of you. You too. And you. But... You and you, you're my one true love. Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When we last left off, we beat the game. Simply put, we beat the game, and now we are in the after game. Also, I could never turn my back on my weapons. They're, they're, they mean too much. I've gone through so much time to farm them that I, I can't. I can't throw them away. Though I wish I could. Oh, I wish I could. And today we are going to be, uh, well, we're not exactly jumping into the DLC quite yet. I know the Champion's Ballad is open, and it's definitely something we're going to be doing very soon, but there are a couple of other quests that we picked up quite some time ago, even going as far back as the very beginning of the Let's Play, and I'm looking at you, Royal Recipe and Royal Guards Gear, when I say that, as well as Xenoblade Chronicles 2. That was very, very early in the day, and we never touched it. And the gift for the real, uh, for the great fairy. So we're going to be doing that this episode, I think. And then possibly, if we have time, ending off the episode with going to the Shrine of Resurrection and starting DLC Pack 2. Now, you might wonder, where am I? Where on earth am I? This is not a normal part of the map. Well, I'm glad you asked. I discovered, off screen, that you can traverse this ridge. And I don't know how far you can go, and I don't know what's over here. I don't know if there are Korok Seeds, uh, there are apparently Stalfos, or what are, what are these guys even called? I don't... Stalmoblins, or Stalblins? I'm gonna call them Stalblins. I think that's cooler. I cannot go any further. Well, I guess that answers that. I was, I was hoping that we'd be able to go over here, since it allows us to go over here on the map. But we can't go any further. There are no Korok seeds to have here. And it's not even that I found one off screen. There are just none. There are none. And I'm at the, the edge of the map here. And there's there's nothing around. That's kind of odd. You'd think there'd be like an underwater cave around there. There are Lizalfos, strangely. But no cave. That's, that's odd. Okay, so getting... Actually starting this episode... Uh, we are going to... We're right next to a place we need to be for Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 2 questline. But instead, I think I'm going to... Set the royal recipe as my marker. And that is at the Riverside Stable. So let's go to Wago Kata Shrine. And it's just a short jaunt over to Riverside Stable where we can complete that quest. Beautiful Wago Kata Shrine and beautiful Riverside Stable. There should be a guy just right out here. In fact, I believe this is the location for both royal quests, and it might even be the same guy. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we should probably turn on our mini-map. I, I normally... It's not even that I prefer it either way. I just switch between, uh, between control or switch between UIs as I see fit. Sometimes I want to explore or I'm trying to get to a place and I so I turn the minimap on. Other times I'm burdened by a lot of the a lot of the gauges we see. Like the noise gauge is completely unnecessary once you learn that you can make noise because you know what makes noise and what doesn't. This makes noise. This makes noise. This does not. So I, I normally turn that off. Okay. Goder. Mmm, a love a uh, cuisine lovely enough to be favored by the Hyrulean supposed to be Highland royal family. If the recipe still exists, I'd love to try it. Wait, didn't I get this? Didn't I get the royal recipe? Did I not? 
Old cookbooks may be lying around Hyrule Castle. Apparently I did not. I was fairly certain that we found one in the library, but maybe I have to go back. I might have to go back this episode and find that out. Okay, Royal Guard's gear we did get. Uh, we can equip that real quick, and that actually reminds me of, of something I was meaning to talk about. Where is this, this guy? Not up there. Uh, the Royal Guard's armor, if I can climb this, has a unique and hidden stat buff. Not only is it a hidden and probably the, one of the hardest uh, pieces of armor to actually obtain in terms of, of how far in the story you have to get, but it's also it's also hidden in that it has a secret within it. So I want you to watch my stamina right here. I have, I have basically full stamina. I'm going to unequip this so I don't get the charge bonus, and then I'm just going to jump. Alright, so that, that uses about one upgrade's worth of stamina. In fact, I think it's exactly one upgrade's worth of stamina. So a fifth, or sorry, that'd be a third, right? No, a little bit less than a third. Uh, it, it's over a quarter of our stamina gauge. All right, now I'm going to equip the Royal Guard's armor fully. And if you look in the stat buffs here, it says charge attack stamina up. All right, I want you to keep that in mind. And in the text here, it does not say anything, it doesn't say anything about what this could do on the, these two pieces, but it does say it on the cap. It's lighter than it looks, and easy to move around in. That's all, that's the, all the indication you get as to this secret. Watch me jump. You see that? That's about a sixth of our gauge. A sixth of our gauge just consumed. And the only buff we have here is Charger's Tax Stamina Up. So, there are a couple other comparisons I want to make. First, I'm going to equip the Climbing Gear. And jump on this. Jump. That is about the same. That's about the same. In fact, I think it's exactly the same. I'm going to compare it once more. Jump. That's the same amount of stamina. So, the Royal Guard's Armor has a hidden stat boost that halves stamina use from climbing. Okay, that's great. It it's basically a it's basically climbing gear. But the the story doesn't stop there. We have plenty of time in the episode, so I can manage to sh show this stuff off. Let's jump into the shore, and I don't want to use stamina. All right, watch me boost dash. All right, that's that's my boost there. Now we're gonna unequip one of these, and you'll see it uses a substantial amount more. And furthermore, if we equip you can probably see where this is going. If we equip the Zora gear and boost, it's the same exact amount. So, the Royal Guard's armor is basically the climbing gear and the Zora armor combined with the downside of not giving us the normal buff of just uh, swimming faster and then also climbing faster. So, it's for uh, just like rough stuff where if I'm just climbing around and swimming around and using boosts and trying to go quick, uh, it's better. It's just better because I don't have to switch armor, and it's completely hidden. If I if I tested the the berserker gear, or I think it's called barbarian, uh, if I tested the barbarian gear, which also has charge attack stamina up, it doesn't work. So it's a completely hidden stat buff that they don't tell you about, except in that one little tagline that says it's lighter than it looks and easy to move around in, which is really weird. Uh, one final test I want to make is the cap. What does this? No, it is in fact the set bonus. So you need the set bonus to do this. Even though it's the cap that says that it exists. And it, it's just, it's really weird. It's its kind of strange. And you cannot upgrade this armor, but that still makes it pretty good. Alright, is it you? I don't think it's you. It's Royal Guard series. Yeah, it's its this person. Hello. Get up. Rise and shine, sleeping biddy. Hey, you've got some gall walking in on a sleeping stranger. Show a little respect. Well, get out of bed! This is no time to be sleeping. It's 2.50 a.m. People on the other side of the globe are working right now, and you're just sitting here lazing it off. Lazying it off. <sighs> Stupid layabout. The Royal Guard series. Wait just a minute. Can you show me that shield you got there? Uh, uh, this ancient shield? Oh, oh no, this. This is... I didn't know she wanted this. I thought she wanted the armor. This is incredible. Thank you. You've shown me something truly spectacular. I need to go out and find one of these myself. Wait, so you're not interested in the armor at all? I went for all this work for really 
nothing other than, you know, a sweet beret? You're soaking my appreciation. 300 rupees, wow. Oh. And she doesn't have anything else for us. Will you trade it for a topaz? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, that's not worth it. Although, if you're farming gear, that's a great way to do so. All right, so that was a, a quick quest line. I guess we're going to have to go back to Hyrule Castle, which I did not expect to have to do. But I want to find that royal recipe, and I want to knock it out. Also, uh, since the beginning of the series, I have since gone through a bit of a paradigm shift, and I am after every side quest. And this is aided especially by uh, the little thing on the bottom part of the screen, which says, I have cleared 68 side quests of 90. I believe this only appears after you beat the game, considering I never noticed it before. So that means we have 32 quests left. And if you know of a quest that I have not yet done, tell me. I'm going to scroll through this very slowly. Or I guess kind of fast. If you want to pause while I'm doing this, Go ahead and do so. But these are the quests that I have completed. Now compare those with yours and tell me what else I need to what else I need to do. Alright, uh, what else are we doing? Oh yeah, yeah. Another thing that I, I found out is if you look at the left side of the screen, future pile, if you could uh, blow this up for the viewers, you will see that now that I've completed the game, there is a percentage completion on the left bottom part of the screen. So, I have 67.23% of 100. I don't know if Korok Seeds count for that. Uh, please type in the comments if you know the answer to that. Otherwise, I'm going to continue getting Korok Seeds. I'm going to continue doing quests. And if there's something I haven't done, please tell me. This is after game. So, that means uh, episodes are going to be very, uh, very much dictated by you, the viewer. So, more so now than ever, your input is invaluable to me. All right, that being said, I'm going to travel back to the library, and we're going to be seeing if we can find this royal recipe. I found out from internet that you can shoot down the propellers. You see this? Look at that. So much depth. So much depth is to this game. It's crazy! You can't even see us. I don't think he can lock onto us. Oh, he wait. He's trying. He's definitely trying. He is very much trying. Come on. Come here. Come on. Oh, this is kind of weird. He's like trying to do the worm. He's... This is very odd. Uh, I'm sorry. This must be really embarrassing for you. I... Oh, man. Oh, you... You're face down in the ground. Oh, you poor thing. You... Oh, you, I'm so... I, I guess I had to put him out of his misery. But I... Mmm. That's a bad way to go. That... That's the equivalent of me blowing up his legs. Blowing up someone's legs and then telling them to crawl. Like, mmm, mmm, mmm. Uh, uh, cutting someone off at the knees and then telling them to run for their lives. Eee, that's that's not G-rated by any means. Somebody in the comments section uh, wondered why if everyone had died in Hyrule Castle, where all the bodies were. Now, from what I would assume, the Bakoblins and Lizalfos present and Moblins would have eaten them and probably uh, the, a lot of the Don's bones would have rotted to dust uh, thus f in, the, in that time. But in areas where it would make sense that bones would be preserved, like a dark cave like this or a dank cave, uh, there are bones. So if you're thinking that was a plot hole, that is actually not a plot hole. There are, in fact, bones. The Rug family's secret recipe number one, the princess's favorite, fruitcake. Secret recipe two, the chancellor's favorite, monster cake and goat butter for a spell. It's a dangerous disc that- Wait, wait, wait a minute. Quest. Oh! I see. They don't want you to find the recipes. They want you to make them. Oh, that makes a lot more sense. Apple, wild berry, tabantha wheat, cane sugar, no butter, will give us... Fruitcake. Yeah, I didn't read the description. Future pal, throw it on screen. Tabantha wheat, goat butter, 
Cane sugar monster extract will make us monster cake! Mmm, royal cuisine. You what? You really discovered a royal cookbook? Could I bother you further to prepare the dish for me? I must sample it. Give him fruit cake. This, this is the fruit cake said to be eaten by the princess of Hyrule. Crunch, munch, munch, gulp. Simply delicious. Mmm. Well, how could I possibly describe this experience? Mmm. A refreshing aroma reminiscent of galloping across these majestic plains on horseback. Mmm. No, that undersells the dish's complexity. It fills me with that heart thumping intensity that seals your seizes your very soul when you're spotted by a guardian. Mmm. A truly elegant dish. I never thought I would taste something so quite so thrilling. Mmm. I really must thank you for giving me such a beautiful meal. Here, take this for your trouble. Its dazzling silver light reflects your beaming smile. Mmm. What? You discovered another recipe? Could I bother you further to prepare the dish for me? I must sample it. This monster cake is said to have been a favorite of the Minister of High. Ha! <laughs> That, that's a deep reference, and no one will get that. That is great. That's a reference to Spirit Tracks, how the Minister of Hyrule is, in fact, a monster. Man, Zelda, or Nintendo dug deep for that. Crunch, munch, munch, gulp. It tastes beautiful. <gasps> Wait for it. Mmm, how can I put it into words? It's like biting into a chew. Chew. Mmm. No, that would be disgusting and dangerous. It stimulates the brain, much like being pummeled by a high knox. Ah. A truly elegant dish. Mmm. I never thought I would taste something quite so thrilling. I really Ooh. must thank you for giving me such a beautiful meal. Here, take this for your trouble. Mmm. I gotta do it once more. Mmm. Okay, next quest, with whatever time we have remaining in this episode, we have a gift for the Great Fairy. Oh, I just realized we have to do Xenoblade Chronicles 2 as well. Well, it, thankfully, thankfully, we have already done this, and the the uh, formality should be just that. It should be as simple as just warping to this guy, talking to him, and claiming our reward. Great Fairy! Oh. Hey, it's a you! Did you give uh, the Great Fairy an offering? Uh? <laughs> all the right, thank you. It looks like asking a you would, was a good call after all. Uh, oh, so that means you met the Great Fairy, huh? Man, I'm uh, so jealous. <laughs> but hey, at least you got uh, to meet her. And that means, technically, I got to make uh, my offering to the Great Fairy. Uh. I can't uh, thank you enough. Uh, for getting something? Um, uh, no, I don't think so, uh. Wait, the what? You are trying to tell me you want a reward, are you? Uh? You got to see the great the fairy thanks to my tip, didn't you? And now you're asking for a more? Ah, uh? oh, great the fairy. Uh, even if it was just in the, my dreams, why won't you uh, appear before uh, me? Gift for the great the fairy, uh, complete. Uh. The great the fairy. Uh, I bet that she ca she's a kind and a beautiful and just the perfect. Is that all he says? Well, it was fun, Tor Torin. And, uh, as he s has always said for the past 30 years, Let's go! Back at beautiful 9, 9 p.m. We are at, where, it where are we at? Oh, we're at, uh, Bridge of, wait, what is this called? The Bridge of Hylia. I wanted to call it the Bridge of Elden, but I think we've... I think that's way over here, and it's not even that impressive. Yeah, it's just right there. It's it's a tiny little bridge, and it's not worth checking out. Excuse me. So, uh, we are currently here. There is the dragon, but that is not why we're here. We're not here for the dragon. We are here because, looking at the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 quest, uh, the southern sky from the middle of the largest bridge. So, we need to go to the middle of the bridge... Uh, probably, I, I could say we could kill the Zalfos, but that isn't really needed. Let's, uh, you want, you know what, no. 
Uh, let's use the Lizalfos mask, since I always use a Majora's mask, and I never get to use uh, cool things like that. And we're going to go chill with some Lizalfos and watch the southern sky. And presumably, a shooting star should appear. Hopefully, it, it's not a random chance, so we don't have to uh, basically farm knights. But I believe that this, this will uh, seal the deal. And we should be able to just look south, which is where I'm looking now. Uh, probably due south. And we should be good. I, w I would assume that this is enough. And we can just stand here and then look south and then the rest of uh, our work will be done for us. So let's just do that. And while we do that, I can, uh, I can talk about the end of the game. Because we... We beat the game last episode, as strange as that feels, and I think a lot of you in the comments, especially those of you who have stayed with the series for as long as I have, since the beginning of, well, this game being released, had quite, quite mixed feelings. Am I going to get shocked by this dude? I am. Uh, let's, let's take some cover. We had we had quite quite a few mixed feelings about that fight and about the end in general, and it was very bittersweet. It was a good ending, but it just, hmm, I don't know. I I still think that the, it could have be it could have been something more. Like I think the boss fight would have definitely uh, benefited greatly from being a three part boss fight, uh, very similar to Twilight Princess in that we we uh, we fought Ganon in uh, this weird kind of caster form. Uh, hopefully this isn't spoiling uh, the end of Toilet Princess too much. And then we fight a beast version of him, and then it it really boils down. All of the all of the water's boiled out, and what we're left with is... Whoa. Wait, what is that sound? What is that sound? Did you hear that? I mean, we have a blood moon, but... I heard a I heard a comet meteor sound, but what we would be uh, left with are the is basically uh, the 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 humanoid Ganondorf. But what we got was a Revolve horseback battle, and it felt weird. It felt like there should have been one last stage where Gan was like he gave up on reincarnation, but he has the Triforce of Power, and he is now Ganondorf. I I would have loved that. But it just felt, especially because the, the difficulty curve is so odd for that final boss battle. The the first phase of Ganondorf, uh, basically Ganondorf's incarnation, I think I'm going to kill these guys. They're really getting on my nerves. You, you just go away. There, that's better. The first phase of the battle, with Ganondorf being in his uh, incarnation, is quite difficult. He's very intense, he has a lot of attacks that are just so big and grandiose, and they're hard to shield bash, and you can get a flurry rush on them, as I found out when I was recording the flashbacks, but beyond that, you can't, you can't interact with them that much, and they're just so diverse, he has so many different attacks. And then you go to Dark Beast Ganon, where he has literally one attack. Two, if you want to count him just existing. But he has one real attack. Wait, do you hear that? There's the sound again. What is that sound effect? I don't know. It's just Dark Beast Ganon was... Oh, 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 there it is, there it is. Ha ha. Just as I began to doubt. Don't go in the water. Don't, oh, oh, it barely didn't go in the water. Ooh, man. Uh, okay, I need to, I need to approach this carefully because they actually load, they only load once we get close. It looks like it's on even ground, but I can stasis it. But the, like I said, the fight with, with Dark Beast Ganon is so mind-numbingly simple and easy that it just, it feels so weird. I, I'm not sure about that. Whoa. What is, it's a chest? Whoa. Oh, thanks, Lineru. Thank you. Go away. You guys. Go away. You know what? No, I'm just going to open this chest. Oh, boy. What's in here? Salvager headwear. 
Collaboration, Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Essential gear used by a boy who seeks a su seeks sunken treasure in the Cloud Sea. It's a rather rare find. Swim speed up. Ooh. That's cool. I... Salvager headgear. That's sweet. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next location and I can continue to ramble on. So personally, what I believe they should have done... Oh, also, uh, we are at the eastern sky from the skull's left eye. I believe this is the only skull in the game. Really. I mean, this is Skull Lake. We're on the left eye, so I think this makes sense. Oh, dude. That's cool. It has the thing on the back. Oh, I know. Oh, if we swim, will this go on our body? Oh, or on our head, rather? I hope so. Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, that's lame. The diver's helmet doesn't actually go on our, our head. So, how I would have done the, the final bo uh, boss fight with Dark Beast Ganon, I would have just lifted a page straight out of Shadow of the Colossus. We had all of those sigils, and what I think they should have done is uh, we shoot a sigil, and then part of Calamity Ganon's or Dark Beast Calamity Ganon's is ma Malice, Malice. Uh, part of it goes away, clearing the way for us to climb onto him, and then stab the the sigil, and then come back off, uh, ride our horse, shoot uh, another section, allows to stab it, and then as we do that, it would slowly get the Malice off of Ganon, and it would kind of work as a double-edged sword, and then uh, he would actually be like Dark Beast Ganon from Toilet Princess, and then he would turn into Ganondorf. That's that's how I think it should have gone down. And that would have been a lot more a lot more climactic. I just found the final battle to be a bit disappointing considering that this was the thing, this was the beast that had conquered all the champions, Link and the the uh, and the divine beast and Zelda included and beat them with ease and then we get there and Dark Beast Ganon is a joke compared to his previous form. Having looked this up, apparently I need to be on the skull's right eye for some reason. It says left, but it will drop near the ocean, and I just simply won't be able to see it. If I am- there it is! Oh wow. Let's go. I, I just simply won't be able to see it if I'm down there, so I don't know why it was wrong. The southeastern sky. Oh, southeastern sky. I, I got that mistake. That mistaken. Um. Oh wait, wait. No, it is eastern sky from the skull's left eye. So yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I I don't know about that. But I do know that we are about to get our second piece of gear. And if it's anything like this first piece, it's gonna look pretty sweet. And it gives swim speed up. But what I'm really interested to see, I I have a feeling that this next piece is not going to give swim speed up. I think it's going to give something else like say, uh, run speed up or something, or a climbing speed up, and I think because it's a salvager's gear, it's like, you you know, you should be adapted for your surroundings. I, I think that what is going to happen is this is going to have an assortment of buffs that are, are going to make this a really cool, really cool. So, let's see that. Here's our piece. It's probably the salvager's chest plate, since we got the helmet first. And this chest looks pretty cool. I... I'm going to take a picture. Ow! Go away! I'm gonna take a picture of this because that's pretty sweet. I I am a fan of that. All right, let's open this chest. Get our chest plate. Salvager vest. Uh, essential gear used by a boy who seeks sunken treasure in the cloud sea. It's a rather rare find. Let's equip this. This hat. Yeah, this is Xenoblade Chronicles too. I was gonna say this. This could be possibly it could be Xenoblade Chronicles, but no, no way. I'm not. A big fan. I'm not a big fan of the t of the shirt he's wearing because it looks like a girl's top, but I guess it's just kind of a steampunky shirt. All right, final thing for this episode for this quest: the southeastern sky from the peak of the tall, pierced snowy mountain, which is probably in Hebra. Hebra Peak. It says pierced. I don't know what it means by that. But I guess we can go to the only real peak. I don't know what peak. Oh, I, I see. Wait, this is pierced. Yeah. So that's probably that's probably what it means. So well, let's go to Hebrew Peak and wait for our final our final comet. 
Whoa, I hear it. I hear it. I hear it. Where is it? Oh, whoa! There it is! I didn't even have to sleep. I was setting up a campfire, and there it is! I am so glad that makes a noise. Oh, boy, our final piece. I didn't even have to work for it. I mean, I had to climb it. I had to take some damage. Uh, let's get the leggings on. I'm kind of sick and tired of taking damage from this. I can heal it up. Yeah, I'm fine now. But I... Ugh, it's annoying. All right, so let's... As we fly there, let's start unequipping our gear so we can see this in full. Uh, that's the wrong menu. I always get that wrong. And let's continue flying. Yeah, this gear's pretty sweet. It, it looks Xenoblade-esque to me, which... Is cool. I, I like Xenoblade. It doesn't look uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X-ish, which is fine to me. I, I, mm, I love Xenoblade Chronicles X. It's one of my favorite games, but I definitely acknowledge the flaws in it. It's a very flawed game. But, that doesn't matter. We're not talking about X. We are talking about Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Essential gear used by a boy who seeks... I didn't even look at the stat bonus on the other one. But it looks like they're all swim speed up. Who seeks sunken treasure in the cloud sea. It's a, it, they're a rather rare find. So, let's see if we get a set bonus from this. Swim dash stamina up. Ooh. So this is just the an, an alternate piece of the Zora gear. That cannot be upgraded because it's DLC. Uh, let's... Let's warp out. Let's warp over to, uh, not the Shrine of Resurrection because that's, that's a bit... I, I need to go there, but I don't want to get into a cutscene when we're ending the episode. So I'm going to warp over to Amanel, and we're going to look at this. Omino Shrine. And stupid, stupid things. What are these called? Stalkablins. Dumb Stalkablins. Go away. I don't want any of your sass. I'm just trying. Oh, you can't swim because you're bones. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. I My only problem with it is I wish we could put the helmet on. I don't know. It's probably not an option. I just really wish you could put the helmet on because it's sweet. It's very steampunk. And normally that's an insult for some reason. I don't know why. But I... I adore steampunk stuff. It it looks so cool to me. Uh, like Bioshock. Bioshock is, is is a great game visually for that reason. Uh, are there? I, I'm try, I'm kind of coming up a lot with a loss for other steampunk games, but Bioshock, man, like it's it's beautiful. I I love what how steampunk looks. I I usually use that kind of gear in Terraria because it looks pretty sweet. I just love the look. Alright, uh, that is sadly going to be it for this episode. I was thinking I could end it off with going to the Shrine of Resurrection, but I don't know what that entails in, in terms of cutscenes, so I'd rather play it safe and start next episode by going into that shrine and starting on DLC Pack 2. Alright, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode in any capacity, please tell your friends. Please do so. Share this video or another video that you, of, of mine that you want to see people experience and get them in on this bandwagon because I love making this content and I, I really want to share it with other people. Uh, I release new episodes of Breath of the Wild every Monday and Wednesday. Now, just as a quick forewarning, I am not recording next episode right now. Uh, I am going to be recording it at when this episode comes out. So if there is any, uh, any pieces of advice you'd like to give me, I will see it for next episode. So give it now or forever hold your peace, because I'm going to probably be recording two or three episodes when I, rec I start in on DLC Pack 2, so keep that in mind. Alright, thank you so much for watching. I'm going to look at a beautiful sunset with this Xenoblade gear on, and enjoy, Gale is now ready. enjoy all things Xenoblade. So I'll see you guys next time for another episode of Pal Plays, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Also, this is very much a Xenoblade screensaver right here. It could only be made better by me stabbing a sword in the ground, but unfortunately they have not added that yet. Alright, see you guys later.